Hi, my name is Dr. Stephanie Tran, and I'm a practicing endodontist in New York City. In this video series, I'll be walking you through some common challenges and indications I've encountered in the field, and how I've used CBCT to help me problem solve and treatment plan more quickly and efficiently, and how it can help you too. In this video today, we're going to be discussing root canal retreatment and specifically how CBCTs can be extremely helpful in both the diagnosis and treatment planning of these procedures. So we're gonna be discussing how to evaluate a case for root canal retreatment and how to use the CBCT for improved diagnosis of the root canal retreatment as well. Now, when we first start off with an evaluation, we of course take the two dimensional radiographs. In this case, especially a PA because we wanna see the apical portion of the tooth. We, have, we start off with the clinical evaluation as well with all the clinical findings, the patient interview, as well as the sensibility testing such as the percussion, palpation testing, and pulp vitality testing. Then we put all this information together and decide, especially if a CBCT may be needed, to thoroughly evaluate this tooth. So in this case, we wanna take a look first at the 2D radiograph. If there's any specific bone loss associated with the root canal treatment, is there periapical radiolucency or radio opacities, as well as any particular vertical or horizontal bone loss, any things that correlate with um, periodontal issues, as well as with the clinical findings if there are per any periodontal issues. We want to take a look at the frications of teeth that have multiple roots, as well as what kind of restorative issues there may be, be going on with the tooth, such as if there's caries, bone loss, tooth structure loss, feral issues, and if there are any lesions associated with the tooth, especially if there are any J-shaped lesions, radio opacities, and radiolucencies, and then if there are any PDL or lamina dura issues surrounding the tooth, um, that may be associated with a radiolucency. One thing to keep in mind is that just because a J, there is a J-shaped lesion, meaning if there is an apical radiolucency that extends up the side of the tooth, that does not necessarily always mean a vertical root fracture. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about vertical root fractures and cracks, you can definitely check out some of my other videos here with Henry Shine. But specifically on teeth, when we're first evaluating for the root canal treatment and whether a root canal retreatment needs to be done, we need to correlate these two dimensional findings with the clinical findings. Then when we take a CBCT, we decide we may need one, especially if, for example, there are certain things we cannot evaluate with the 2D radiograph, such as if there are any issues with the root canal filling itself, or we're trying to look for any missed canals that we may suspect. Additionally, we want to take a look at that associated bone loss, tooth structure loss, and any lesions such as radiolucencies and radio opacities as well. The CBCT is also really great for giving us better details about any vital structures as well as the better, the full extent of the bone loss and whether it extends to any particular vital structures, bony perforations of the alveolar plate, or if it extends even to other teeth. And then we also, of course, want to look at the anatomy itself. Whenever we're evaluating the root canal treatment, we want to see if it respects the anatomy, meaning if it's centered within the tooth and it's centered all the way down the root. We want to see if it's an adequate length and size or if it's excessive at any point and if there is a very thin root remaining at any point. Keep in mind that if there is a very thin root left, root wall left after a root canal treatment, sometimes that may affect the prognosis of the tooth. So if there's very, very little root wall structure remaining, then unfortunately, by the time we remove the root canal filling material to do a root canal retreatment, there may not be adequate tooth structure and too high of a risk of fracture or perforation of the root. There are some instances that having a CBCT will definitely give us much more information about whether or not the root canal filling material is adequate or excessive and whether we may need to do root canal treatment at all. Sometimes if the root canal shows that there is far little tooth structure left, far too little tooth structure left, then it's actually recommended not to do the root canal treatment because it may cause further damage of the tooth. 
Additionally, the CVCT can also tell us if there are any um, concerns with the root canal filling itself, such as if there are voids and missed areas, such as fins and other missed anatomy, if there are actual additional curvatures, such as um, an, a particular apical exit, and especially if there are periapical radiolucencies and other radiolucencies, we can see if the canal is associated with that radiolucency, so it can actually tell us if there may be lateral canals as well. So we'll start off by discussing a case where I was evaluating for root canal retreatment and what might be causing the need for root canal retreatment to begin with. So let's start off with, seeing, with talking about our findings. This patient presented with an existing root canal that she reports was done at least seven years ago. She said she had some pain in that lower anterior area. It felt like her gums were kind of like swollen around it. And then when I evaluate the tooth, we could see that there was an existing root canal. We took a, the PA to confirm that, that the root canal actually looks pretty centered on the 2D radiograph. It looks like it's to the end. Um, it looks like it's an adequate length. In terms of density, I think that's a little debatable. Many, many times we recommend very minimally invasive root canal treatment. So it could just be that this, pa this patient had a particularly minimally invasive um, treatment. Um, we did note leakage of the restoration as well as um, we could see that there was a deep probing on the lingual, approximately six or seven millimeters, and some gingival inflammation. However, there was no swelling, there was no deep probing to the apex, and it did not have um, excessive any evaluations of clear fractures or cracks or, or any periodontal issues such as mobility as well. So the reason why I had recommended a CBCT in this case is because I want I was suspecting that there was either a an additional canal which we can see that the other teeth the other anterior teeth look like they may have two canals. The reason why I suspected that is because we can see that it's not one clear obvious line. It looks like it's two faint lines for all the mandibular anterior teeth. So that tells us that either that there is a um, two canals that join or a, um, a little bit of tooth structure in between, like it's a figure eight shaped canal system. So it's two canals that are together. So when we evaluate the tooth with um, testing, this patient did not have any reaction to cold, of course, because it had an existing root canal filling material, but it did have percussion tenderness and no palpation tenderness and no biting tenderness. So when we take the CBCT, um, some we could see that there's this little dark line in this tooth. We sometimes are concerned, you know, of course, with any situations and any kind of deep probings if there might be a fracture. But in this case, like I said, I did ne not necessarily confirm one. However, that whenever we see cases where there where there's an existing root canal and a large lesion or pus or reinfection, we sometimes want to wait and see. So what we do is we remove the root canal filling materials, we retreat it, we can um, do a visual analysis to confirm for any fractures or any other issues, then we place calcium hydroxide. We could see in the CVCT, uh, this is a screenshot of it, that there is that dark line that tells me that there was either possibly a second canal or a, um, or very unlikely that there's a fracture, but you'll see soon in the CVCT itself. So once I completed the endodontic treatment, we can see that actually there was a second canal. The, and then after I had done that two visit kind of treatment, as you saw in that explanation, that where we remove the, the existing root canal filling material, place calcium hydroxide, and then um, complete it after the symptoms have resolved and the sinus tract or other uh, findings of an abscess or infection, when they resolve, we know that that's healing. So upon the second vis visit, this patient was confirmed not to have any fractures. It was just the missed canal that, and since all her symptoms resolved and the probing decreased, we recommended that the root canal um, was a success and we recommended for the tooth to be maintained. So this tells us that retreatment was definitely the best option for this patient. All right, so let's take a look at the CBCT itself for this patient and I'll explain what I found and why I could confirm it was not a fracture and what we could confirm for the root canal retreatment. So whenever we look at a tooth, we always want to center the entire tooth, the root, 
with the CBCT. So we can see here we have the little um, crosshairs. We put the tooth centered on those crosshairs, and that way we can look at each of the slices at each of the cross sections. So we can make the crosshairs disappear. We always want to set the thickness nice and low. We can increase some of the and change some of the lightness and darkness and things. Okay, and also kind of make things a little bit more clear. All right, now that we've centered the tooth, we can take a look at the tooth itself and scroll through the existing root canal treatment. So we can see that at first it almost seems like the root canal treatment is not bad. If we look from this slice, it looks pretty good. It's centered, it fills up the canal system, it's in the middle of it, it gets to the end, so it's to the apex. However, um, we don't see any issues like it's going in another direction, it's off-centered anywhere, it looks pretty normal. However, it's in the other slices that we can see the definite um, benefits of having a CBCT. The reason why we suspected and it was confirmed with the CT that there is a second canal is we can see that this root canal filling material is actually off-centered on the other views. So in this case, yes, it is centered. However, in this case, it's not. It's coming mostly to the buckle here. They, they can then see that dark line, and that tells us that there is a second canal system or like a second por um, portion. So either that there are two canals that are separate and then join, because we don't see a separate exit for the canal here, or that the two canals are sort of like joined together in sort of a figure eight shape like that, that can be treated as two separate canals. But it looks like, unfortunately, this tooth only had the root canal filling material on one side, on only the buccal, and the lingual portion had not been treated. That's why it's only filling one side. We can see the continuation of the lack of centeredness in this view as well. So here in the bottom view, in these slices, we can see that as we scroll up, yeah, it seems like it's pretty centered. But then further down the tooth in that mid root portion, if it was centered, it would be towards here. This is the middle of the tooth. However, instead is far more closer to the buckle with a portion of this being a dark area on the lingual. In this case, I did not suspect this as a beam hardening artifact. Um, instead, because we can see that there is kind of a that oval shape or almost like two canals together shape and multiple and multiple anterior teeth, we can see here that long oval, long oval, long oval, long oval shape. We can then confirm that this is not just a single dot, single canal shape, but that it's either two canals that join or one long oval. So like a figure eight shape or one long oval that it's um, that the lingual portion of this canal system had not been treated. And because of that, that most likely is what is causing the periapical radiolucency, the lesion, and some of that deep probing. So we want to keep in mind there has to be a reason for why root canal treatment may have some disease associated with it. We don't generally use the term success and failure. We want to know why it has disease. In this technical case, the root canal itself is not, may not necessarily be the issue. It's that there was leakage from the coronal restoration and recurrent caries. The bacteria entered the root canal system. And because this area had not been treated here on the lingual, it, you, it was able to infiltrate, fully contaminate, and then cause disease that we can see here in that apical portion. So this root canal treatment, we confirm, is not centered. That means that the root canal anatomy of the lingual portion had been missed. That tells us that root canal treatment, retreatment, is recommended for this case. We can also see that there was some of that disease associated with that apical portion that matches the periapical radiolucency that we saw in the two-dimensional radiograph. We can see here that there is the periapical radiolucency and a widened PDL. The reason why we know that that's a radiolucency and widened PDL and signs of disease rather than a normal PDL is because when we compare to the other apices, we don't see this darkness underneath. We can see that the PDLs are far thinner. We can also see a very intact lamina dura through the CT. So we can see that there is like kind of this white border, white bony border around the teeth. That's the lamina dura. 
And then we can see from these cross sections that the periapical radiolucency of this tooth is again right there and occurring where that's not existing for the other teeth. That again confirms that this tooth was the one causing the disease. The etiology was recontamination, not due to a fracture, and that root canal retreatment is recommended for this tooth. And that was confirmed with the findings at the end. So as we can see here, CBCT is a great tool when it comes to improved diagnosis for root canal retreatment and to help us both evaluate the root canal treatment and treatment plan for better results for our patients. Well, as you can see, technology can be a game changer when it comes to improved diagnostics and treatment planning. And I hope this video provided some useful tips and techniques that you can start implementing in your practice today. If you found this content useful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be alerted of all future videos. Thank you.